is starting to interfere with my instrument. Let me know when you're ready to launch.
I have something I need to discuss with you. Forgive me for pulling you aside again, but, well, there's so much to process right now. The Emissary, the Hunter, the Unity, an entire multiverse. I can't even begin to wrap my head around it all. That's an understatement. The fact that we are the origin of the Starborn. Humans literally reborn by entering the Unity. The same, yet different. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I feel like most of the knowledge we've amassed in the last few centuries about the universe has just been made obsolete. Yes, that's exactly right. Humans are clearly a victim of their own success. We've been pushing further and further outwards from our home, when we should have spent more time being prepared for the consequences. Our current problem relates closely to the nature of humans as a species. This rushed curiosity has led us to enter the Unity and become Starborn. It certainly is. Without curiosity, our motivation to explore would vanish. But in this case, there's a difference between exploring the cosmos and blindly entering the unknown without being prepared for the consequences. But it has made a difference. Here we are, caught in the middle of some sort of needlessly violent crusade between the Hunter and the Emissary. You'd think that a technologically advanced society would have evolved past petty squabbling over something like the artifacts. It almost makes me wonder if entering the Unity has done them more harm than good. Oh, absolutely. Their arrival in our universe is much too timely to be for any other reason. It's also clear that the need to collect these artifacts are an obsession for them, almost bordering on an addiction. That leads me to wonder what the Unity has done to their minds and their souls. No, no, that's not it at all. When you pass into whatever lies beyond, we don't know what will become of you. Will you remember your life as you knew it? Will the hunger to collect the artifacts consume your life like it's clearly consumed the Starborn? This goes well beyond the boundaries of simple exploration. As the Chair of Constellation, I want all of us to have this opportunity to explore the Unity. It would be the pinnacle exploration of our lives. However, after we enter the Unity, we'll likely evolve. You and I, as we stand here right now, will essentially cease to exist. You're a respected colleague, and I wouldn't want to lose you. I'm not sure. I'm guessing based on what we've learned. Even if I accompany you into the Unity, the question still remains. Would we know each other anymore? Even if we did, would we care? Part of what I do as Chair of Constellation is weigh the costs of our expeditions. And this one... Oh, the cost is extremely high. I know. Damn it. I know. Listen. I realize nothing that I say is ever going to change your mind or diminish the enticement of this incredible opportunity. All I ask is that you research the facts before you blindly stumble off into the unknown.
I... I don't know if I'm ready to make that leap, but knowing we'd be doing it hand in hand would certainly make it more comforting. Well, I suppose I've ruined the moment again, haven't I? <laughs> I'm getting quite good at that lately. I'll let you get back to whatever you were doing. Just think what we discussed. I know I will. state of this facility. I wonder why this place was abandoned in such haste. Almost complete. Total time, 5 minutes, 22 seconds. Right on schedule. How are the Helium-3 valves holding, Nova? We double-checked the leakage concerns this morning before the launch. All signs green. 
Any changes to the calculation sequence from Voltaire? No changes since we uploaded the last figures yesterday. It's a clean shot from here to Jupiter. One day the computer will be on board the spaceship. Just imagine that! One miracle of science at a time, Canaveral. Counting down in five, four, three, two, it's amazing what? to think that we're standing on the same planetary body where humankind first ventured into space. Canaveral, are you ready? We've come All a long clear, way Nova. since then. Indicators look good. The ship should be cruising Jupiter's orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in... <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws of physics, Canaveral? We're all pretty excited down here in NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the original data? Not in a million years, Nova. likely way into the NASA facility would be via an elevator shaft taking us straight down. A little bit of cold never hurt anyone, right?
I hope the occupants of this colony ship found alternate transportation to evacuate the Earth before it was too late. Looks like it was some type of crew preparation area. Probably. Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. The recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they have brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cozy up to Dr. Isa, Victor, to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I... I think I'm being invited into the lab. Station log. Dr. Judith Satin, I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I, I don't know how much I should say, but the periodic table just got thrown out the window. The last step before boarding. Hmm, it's definitely seen better days. Look at all this structural damage. We need to be careful around here. Oh my goodness. Some of the artifacts here are from the earliest years of NASA. Oh, what a shame all of this was left behind to deteriorate.
calculations came from. There's something wrong with the math? I think it's quite straightforward. That's not what I'm asking. We've had no success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects, no motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you've had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to pump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust me. I have been trusting you. We keep slamming our heads against a brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise. habitat viability in this area. It seems as if they knew the inevitable was on the horizon. Not much left of this geology laboratory. Ironically, the surrounding rock appears to have sealed the fate of this part of the facility.
a way to access the deeper sections of this storage area. I'm certain we'll find it. Project Log. Dr. Victor Isa. We turned on the prototype today. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore. But further work is going to have to take place in space. Somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us? It's all going to be possible. Project Log, Dr. Judith Tatien. I watched the Gravjet test from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives, expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also overwhelming and worrying. It could take years. Decades before we know what all these side effects of operating a grav drive can be, but no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains. ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we're seeing. Our guess is that the poles might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I just want to be sure. It's not like we're 
aren't doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books? I know what I'm seeing, Victor. The data coming back from the satellites is very clear. It's the grav drives. All those jumps from the moon. At this rate, Earth's atmosphere is going to start sputtering out into space. Can the drives be fixed? I'm working on some designs that should discreetly solve the problem. Under the guise of an emergency update to the fueling pumps. We're talking about the end of Earth, and you're trying to be subtle about it. Judith, the last thing we need is people losing faith in grab drive technology. That might be our only option. To what? Are you seriously saying we should abandon Earth? The timeline is under 50 years. A blink of an eye for a planet, but more than enough time for a human exodus. And what do we tell people? We say it's an act of God. One that science has found a solution for. Time for humanity to take its place in the stars. You know, didn't you? You lied to me. I... All this time, I dedicated my life to this discovery, Victor. And you knew we were going to kill off our planet? You haven't seen the future I've seen. There's an infinite expanse of promise out there. A meteor could hit Earth. A plague, another world war. Colonizing other galaxies secures humanity's future for all coming generations, across all time. At the expense of our home. Stop it, both of you. All that matters is building enough ships to get everyone off this planet. And we need to start now. I'll draft up a statement. We'll need to address the entire international community. I'm sorry, Judith. There isn't a planet in this universe that will be far enough away from you, Victor. We are never speaking again after this is over. My name is Dr. Victor Isa. And if you're listening to this, then you probably already know the truth. I was young when I first headed the retrieval team of an odd gravitational anomaly on Mars, but I kept what really happened that day hidden from everyone except one other person. Even she didn't believe me at first, but I have no reason to lie to anyone now, so I, I hope you'll accept this confession, whoever you are. When I touched the anomaly, I experienced 12 days of lost time. I met myself. He told me everything that has since come true. The grav drive equations, the tests on the moon, Earth's atmosphere sputtering away because of what we had done. But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music, lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive. This artifact from Mars. I hope you make better use of it than I did. And at the core of the first drive,
of the universe. Understand now why I asked you to come here. The artifacts unlocked the secret of interstellar travel at the cost of Earth. An easy trade, honestly. Why have one world when you can have all the settled systems? Assuming we weren't going to lose it anyway. War, disease, famine. All the classics. Don't you see? The power of the artifact forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? What gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the Emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That is why we watch over them. The only thing you are watching out for is yourself. Don't be a fool. The Emissary and I may have our differences, but you do not want to give us a common enemy. For once, he is right. Don't do this. We can collect the final pieces together. Thank you. Well, can't say I didn't try. We'll settle this at the usual place. The buried temple. We'll be there. You're lucky I'm a man of my word. I'll see you there. Stay for a moment. You must have questions about what happens next. We will not be able to go to the buried temple right away. There are still other artifacts out there in the settled systems that haven't been gathered. You will need to work with your colleagues in Constellation to find them. There's always a final artifact in a specific temple. The Hunter and I agreed that whoever you sided with, the other would wait there. 
expect anything and everything. Other starborn, human mercenaries and defenses, alien creatures under mind control. It's all fair game. He and I have made a number of agreements over the years. If you can even call them years at this point. We let him go. In exchange, he'll wait at the buried temple. You'll be able to prepare any way you can before then. All of the other artifacts need to be gathered before the final one will reveal itself. I will be bringing mine. The hunter will be bringing his. And you will need to bring the rest. All of the ones Constellation can find. So, were you eating at the Sage Brook, or is it just a quick snap from the Terra Brew? Can I help? Ask whatever you'd like. Some work done? I'm sure you can find something you like. How about it?
lift off when you are, Captain. When you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. Ever since we talked about the Battle of Cassiopeia, I can't get what happened out of my mind. Was it that obvious? Oh, I thought I could handle these memories, but until I return to Cassiopeia, I'll never be able to put this to rest. I would like that. Actually, I need that. One problem, though. Pinpointing the crew's shuttle wreckage is going to be like trying to find a grain of salt in a sandbox. I think we need to start by locating my old campsite on Cassiopeia 1. Was there to tell? I survived. My crew didn't. Still, oh, I'll never forget my finger hovering over that launch button. Would I launch safely, or explode into a fireball? It turned out that my shuttle had just enough power to allow an emergency landing on the planet's surface. I wouldn't call what I did a soft landing, but thank you all the same. Hold on. I don't know the exact location of my survival campsite. For that, we are going to have to head to Mast and see if we can get the information from my old friend, Admiral Logan. Your instincts are right on target. Logan and I butted heads more than once during my time with the Navigator Corps. We've never seen eye to eye. Look, I hope this isn't asking too much. Last thing I want to do is drag you into some kind of personal crusade. That's why I'm desperate for your help. Truth is, I'm scared. When I set foot on Cassiopeia, I don't know if I'll be able to handle what I find. If I begin to fall apart, I need someone I can trust to hold me together. I know you will. You've always been there when I've needed your help. Why you continue to support me, uh, I'll never understand. I... I don't know what to say. Oh, I, I've been so busy searching the stars for answers. I've overlooked what's been in front of me all this time. True love. Something I've seriously considered sharing with you for a long time. Just not ready. Not yet. Yes. Yes, you're absolutely right. Hey, um, anyway, I've taken up enough of your time. I know you have a lot to do. I really appreciate your offer to visit Cassiopeia. Hopefully, it'll bring me the closure that I've needed for far too long. Nice to see you. Good to see you. Farewell.
Doctor spends a fortune to maintain the lodge, but I'd say it's worth every credit. Constellation is no stranger to loss. Our own founder left on an expedition and never returned. It is easy to talk about the glory and excitement of breaching into the unknown, of lighting the darkness. But it is harder to stare into the face of the cost. That all of our progress is built on top of the lives of those who dared. And that we owe them the courage to continue our work. Thank you, Sarah. If anyone else would like to say a few words. Thank you. If anyone else wants to say something... I thought maybe I would come up with something to say, but I've... got nothing. So, instead... I thought I would quote something that gave me comfort a long time ago. Is God real? The more proper question would be, is reality divine?
pardon. Based on your actions, I've heard this operation's on thin ice. One more mishap, and I'm afraid we're gonna have to shut down. Yo, back. So how did it go? Then things are moving forward. Perfect. Nice job, Rook. I was certain we'd fool Delgado, but never. She's a sharp one. Overcoming her scrutiny is no small matter. Did you discover anything worth reporting yet? Legacy. Why does that sound familiar? Wait a moment. Are you telling me Delgado may have actually located Crix's legacy? Excuse me, Commander. Did you say Crix's legacy? Please tell me you aren't seriously going to give that any credence. Everyone knows that's just a... I don't know, a myth? I'm holding tangible confirmation of the word legacy attached to Crix's name. That's too much of a coincidence to attribute to myth. I suppose it's possible, sir. Intelligence picked up a bit of chatter on that subject recently. We assumed it was some sort of tall tale or a story to attract recruits to their cause. Well, we can solve that little mystery in about 10 seconds. Let me see what we have here. Nope. There are no records of a gal bank transport named the Legacy in the database. <laughs> I think Delgado's trying to manipulate you. What do you think, sir? I think there's no record because gal bank is hiding something. Delgado's no fool. If he risked his own neck to get that information, then he must be on to something. We have to take this seriously. What's your next move? Clever, Delgado. Very clever. If I were in your place, I'd be trying to do the exact same thing. We can't let Delgado get his hands on what could potentially turn out to be the largest haul of credits the Crimson Fleet's ever seen. Maybe I should head out to New Atlantis, sir. I could press the Galbank execs for information. Get ahead of everything. No. Let's allow this to run its course. We have our agent here feeding us information. I think that's good enough for now. There's more to this than just finding the location of the transport. Jasper Cricks was clever. For some reason, he never got there. And let Neva Mora take his place. Or Shinya Voss. Or any one of a number of pirates already gunning for his position. No. The solution is to stick to the undercover operation and determine how much of this is truly a credible threat. It's imperative that you do. If the Crimson Fleet gets its hands on a transport full of currency, it would be disastrous for the settled systems. I need you to do whatever you can to bring us more information. And for God's sake, don't kill anyone on that Starliner. You're both dismissed. I bet operations on the key are a clown show.
have things for you. If you don't mind, I'd like to speak to Admiral Logan sooner rather than later. I thought you'd never ask. Here. Admiral Logan's office shouldn't be terribly far. Let's go. Welcome to Mast. If you have an appointment, you may proceed inside. Sarah Morgan. It's been, what, almost ten years? Admiral, it's, uh, good to see you again, sir. You're not required to address me as sir. That protocol ended the moment you dropped your clusters on my desk, remember? Look, Admiral, I'm not here to open old wounds. Old wounds is an interesting turn of phrase, given our past. Listen to me, Commander. I'm not sure why you're here, but whatever it is, why don't you just get to it? I'm here because I need your help, Admiral. You need my help? That's interesting. The last time we spoke, you made it quite clear that you were turning your back on the Navy. That was a decade ago. Things change. People change. Admiral, please. I didn't come here to argue. I'm here to come to terms with my past. Your past is sitting in a closed file in the archives. That's where you left it when you walked out on the United Colonies. And what about you? Just who in the blazes are you anyway? I haven't spoken to Sarah Morgan for almost ten years, and out of the blue, both of you barge into my office. I want answers. You can start with telling me who the hell you are. <laughs> I see. Then, as Sarah's associate, perhaps you could kindly explain to me why I shouldn't have the both of you escorted from the building. With all due respect, Admiral, this is ridiculous. If you have a problem with me, then there's no need to berate my colleague. I don't have a problem with you, Commander. I'm simply trying to determine why you deserve the Navy's help. That's quite a noble gesture. Is this true, Commander? It's about Cassiopeia, Admiral. I'm heading back there to find out what happened to the crew of the Dauntless, and hopefully, to bring their legacy home. That sounds like a dangerous operation. Are you certain it's worth the risk? I... I don't know. I understand. Mental scars left by war rarely heal quickly, if ever at all. I sympathize with your struggle, Commander. I want to put an end to the sleepless nights. The nightmares, waking up in cold sweat. It's... been... difficult, Admiral. I understand. And I believe I owe you an apology, Commander. Our last encounter has obviously distorted my impression of your character. What can I do to help? If you wouldn't mind allowing me to access the files regarding my rescue, I'd be most grateful, Admiral. That shouldn't be too difficult. I've sent all the relevant information to you, Slades. Was there anything else? No, Admiral. Thank you. You don't need to thank me, Commander. I just hope you find whatever it is you're looking for.
creatures are roaming this planet. Hmm. Time to find out. I can't believe I'm here. It feels like walking into a dream. I'm okay. It's just so surreal. Phew. Okay, so let me get my bearings for a moment. Yes. Yes, this looks correct. Those rock formations nearby look familiar. My old campsite shouldn't be far. I will. I promise. <sighs> Once we get to the campsite, we'll use that as a starting point to search for the crew's shuttle wreckage. <sighs> Let's go. This must be some debris from my shuttle. Not exactly a textbook landing, but I didn't have much of a choice. Well, this is it. This is the spot where I spent close to a year waiting for rescue. Not exactly Paradiso, is it? It was difficult and painful, but it kept me alive. It was home. Look at this thing. It's been sitting here rusting. I think we need to grab an emergency power cell to get the ship's computer up and running. Sure, if we're lucky. When I was stranded, I set up a distress beacon powered by emergency power cells. The beacon was up there on the plateau. I guess it's time to start climbing. I'm sure there's something nearby. Setting up this beacon probably saved my life. Who knows how long I would have been stranded here. You picked the wrong fight!
We've located where the other shuttle went down. I can't believe our plan worked. And so modest, too. Hmm. The telemetry data puts the wreckage out of range to hike. We're going to have to head back to the ship and land on a different part of the planet. Let's get going. off right away or do you need a little bit of time? I'd been on this planet under more pleasant circumstances, I might have had more time to appreciate the beauty it has to offer. I'm sure they had something we can use.
dodging from this debris, the crew's shuttle sustained far more damage than my own. Oh, those poor souls. This is what's left of the crew's shuttle. But it looks like parts were scavenged and dragged somewhere else. Could there have been survivors? if I have to. Just turn around and, and leave. I know how to use this thing, and I will. Oh my god. Who are you? I'm nobody. Just go away. I'm not going to let anyone take my stuff again. No way. Both of you, just go! Answers? About what? How do I know you're telling the truth? Stop it right now. Put away that gun and talk to us. We want to know what happened here. See? You're not nice at all. I knew it. You're a liar. That's all grown-ups do is lie. Sorry. Sorry. <clears throat> I was wrong to get so angry. We are here to help you, and we promise to tell the truth. I don't know. You're kind of scaring me. Why should I listen to you? That's because no one is fooling me ever again. Take me home? I was born here. This is my home. You're going to have to come up with a better story than that. You were born here? Hold on. Oh my god. Your parents? Your mom and your dad? What were their names? Jenna and Elias. Why? Jenna and Elias. Private Jenna Marsh and Corporal Elias Oberst. You're their daughter. Listen to me. I knew your parents. They worked with me on the Dauntless. I'm Commander Sarah Morgan. You're Sarah Morgan? Mom and Dad's captain? My parents used to talk about you all the time. It's like a dream to finally meet you. Yeah? Well, you're too late. My parents are dead. My father died a long time ago. And my mother, she was killed by those, those monsters at the graveyard. It's just me here now, all by myself. Let me ask you a question. Oh, actually, I don't even know your name. Oh, yeah. My name's Sona. Sona? <laughs> what a lovely name. Sona, you mentioned a graveyard. Is that where the crew is, um, you know? Buried? Yeah. It's a bunch of stones with those necklaces like the ones my mom and dad had hanging on them. Thank you, Sona. I'm going to talk to my friend here a minute, okay? Okay, Sarah. Phew. Uh, I don't even know where to begin. Whew. Yeah. That's probably good advice. Oh, there's so much to process. 
but I don't have time to deal with it right now. If you want to help, then find that graveyard and bring me those necklaces Sona mentioned. I'm hoping they're my crew's gene tags. Good. Just be careful. Sona's monsters are undoubtedly hostile life forms that have claimed the graveyard as their territory.
don't know how many times do I have to say it? I said I don't want to go. Leave me alone. So no. Calm down and listen to me. It's much too dangerous to stay here all by yourself, darling. I don't care. This is my home. You can't make me leave. You can't leave her here. It's not safe. She has to come back with us to Jemison. Oh, I don't know what to do. Can you talk to her? I knew I could depend on you. Now all we have to do is convince this poor girl that she's better off leaving the planet with us. I just... I don't know if I have it in me to say the right things. I can hear you talking about me. And I don't care what either of you say. I'm not going anywhere. Look, I'm clearly out of my element here and not in the right state of mind. Could you just talk to her, please? Why won't Sarah listen to me? I've been alone for a long time, and even when bad people visit, I've been safe. That still doesn't mean I should leave the only home I ever had, does it? Mom and Dad told me there was a whole universe out there with thousands of planets. They showed me the maps and the star charts. That does sound pretty cool, but well, it's also kind of scary. It would be hard to leave the only home I've ever known. Well, I've always dreamed of finding a place that's safe from the monsters. But uh, leaving mom and dad behind, it's really hard. Even though they're dead, I don't want to abandon them. Yeah, you're right. I never thought of it that way. I'm sorry I yelled at everybody. I know you and Sarah are just trying to help. I'm going to go get my stuff and then I'll board your ship. Don't worry, I'll stay out of the way until we get... Well, wherever we're going. Poor girl. I hope we've made the right decision. Oh, I do hope that's true. We're ripping Sona from the only home she's ever known and casting her back into society. It's going to be difficult for her to adjust to the changes. Wherever she ends up, just promise me we'll check on her from time to time, please. Thank you. Look, um, before we leave Cassiopeia behind, I wanted to say one more thing to you. Perhaps at the overlook we passed on the way here? I promise it won't take long. Let's go.
Look, before we head back to the ship, I wanted to tell you how much of an amazing gift this has been. You had to push me to come out here, and if I hadn't have listened to you, the universe would probably have never known about that little girl. It's been a long journey, and I'm glad it's over. You know, this is the second time I've been on this world, and until this very moment I never stopped to reflect at just how magnificent it was. Oh, look at this place. This is the reason I'm out here, exploring the stars. Worlds upon worlds just waiting to have their beauty discovered. Shedding this burden of my past has finally allowed me to open my eyes, wider than they've ever been opened before. And it's all because of you. We both have to think about that for a while now, won't we? <sighs> well, I suppose it's time to bid goodbye to Cassiopeia once again. This time, under much happier circumstances. Now, let's head back to Jemison. I want to give those gene tags you gathered to Admiral Logan, and figure out what we're going to do with Sona. Let's pop into Outland while we're here, and see if Joe has anything useful to add to our arsenal. Yes? You needed something? <clears throat> the UC's fleet must be the strongest out there, now and always. There is no alternative. Welcome back. Did you find your answers? And we did it for the child that was marooned there. A child, born from two of the crew, that survived the crash. After her parents died, that poor girl spent years surviving on that hostile world, alone. We abandoned her, Admiral. We let her down. I'm sorry. I had no idea. How could we have possibly known? Sona. Is that her name? She must be a remarkable young woman. She's extraordinary, Admiral. And I'm afraid the United Colonies let her down. You're absolutely right, Sarah. We did let her down. One thing that I can assure you is that the names of these men and women will never be forgotten. I'll see to it personally. Thank you, Admiral. Good luck to both of you. It's been an honor. Once we're done here, we should have a little talk with Sona. Poor thing's waiting for us at the Lodge. Hey. 
Yes? What? Just as we left it. You know, I've often wondered who keeps the lodge so meticulously clean. We should probably talk. There you are. I was wondering when he'd come and say hi to me. Hello, Sona. I see you found your way to the lodge without any trouble. Yeah. It was kind of hard, though. All these people around. Never seen so many people in my entire life. I think I like it. I don't know yet, but it's all really new to me. You'll fit in just fine. You're one of the smartest people I've ever met. So, what do you think? Do you like it here, Sona? At the lodge? Yeah, this place is huge. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. You must be like a bazillionaire, Sarah. <laughs> oh, don't I wish. This place isn't mine alone. It belongs to everyone who's a part of Constellation. And I think it should belong to you too, Sona. I want you to stay here and make this your home. Whoa. Does that mean I get to go exploring with both of you? Or wait. Do I get my own ship? Exactly. And this is the perfect place to begin your education. I understand. Oh, and don't worry. I learn real fast. So you better get ready to have another member of Constellation signing on for missions. I can't wait. Well, anyway, thanks for letting me stay here. I promise I won't let either of you down. I'm sure that you won't. Well, I think we should let Sona get settled. If you wouldn't mind, I'd like to visit the Colony War Memorial now. I want to, uh, to pay my final respects. I'd like to talk to you. Oh, right. I was afraid you were going to bring that up again. Very well. Let's see if I embarrass myself or not. My colleagues, I venture out into the darkness of space once again. Many of you have expressed concern. At my age, you say, surely the risks are too great. Surely Sebastian Banks has earned a rest. Nonsense, I say. To go out into the unknown, to brave the possibility of never coming back, to ignite the spark of hope that humanity will find answers out there in the stars, that is all I have ever wanted. If this last expedition is my time, then I say, I have been fortunate. I have been fortunate to leave surrounded by people who could not be more different from one another, but who share a common purpose. That, dare I say, I am fortunate. My soul has a home it can always come back to. And that was the last thing Sebastian Banks ever said in the lodge before he disappeared. And Constellation has been waiting for him to come home ever since. Goodbye. Captain, may I be of assistance on your ship? Captain, I have been idling. Travel safely. Your safe return to the law. I will go wherever I am needed.
gave up my room in the lodge so Andresia had a place to this call her own. This is amazing. Space to let her the the, the unity. The multiverse. This is everything. And more. Literally. No kidding. Think of the dissertations. Boundless topics, no bounds. Except the books, they're bound. This explains so much, though. They're disorganized, petty, weird, and also deeply fascinating at the same time. Because they are just people. We never rule that out, but it feels so good to know we weren't fighting against robot alien ghost gods or something. True. We need to approach this critically and carefully. We can't just jump in. Or, uh, I, I mean, we could, I guess. But it all comes back to this. We don't know what will happen if you enter the Unity. You might lose yourself or become a two-headed space shark. There are too many variables. What? No. I just have to go back and forth about it for a while first, and then I'll be completely fine. Just part of my process. Of course, at the end of the day, it's your choice. But I will say this. Our entire purpose in Constellation is to explore. Why would we stop now? I'm with you. I'm not gonna hold you back. But if you, you know, become evil or whatever, I'm also not gonna have your back. Anytime. The possibility of turning evil aside? <laughs> I appreciate you taking the lead on this. You're guiding Constellation to new frontiers, new discoveries, and we should all follow your example. Uh, on that note, there's something else I'd like to discuss with you, if you have time. It's not on the scale of entering the Unity, but it is tangentially related. You know where to find me. Yes, Baron. Now isn't the best Number time. Three. Your to retort off. to the Crimson Fleet Raiders on Leonis 3. Captain, it is pleasant to see you. These people, their entire lives distilled down to names on a memorial. I wonder how close I came to being reduced to just a name. You're probably right. That's why I keep you around, to hold my head above water and give me a swift kick in the arse once in a while. And I care about you too. There's obviously some kind of a connection between us that I think we need to discuss. Just let me have another moment here, and then we can head over to the waterfall, so we can talk in private. Let's go.
private sector. Now that's where the real Lovely here, isn't it? <laughs> I've been from one end of the settled systems to the other. But this place, this exact spot, there's nowhere else like it in the galaxy. <coughs> I knew you'd appreciate it. I usually come up here to mull over some of the heated debates we have at Constellation. You'd be surprised how many decisions I've made on this very spot. Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. <laughs> I've certainly learned that you can't make everyone happy. Anyway, uh, I didn't ask you up here to admire the scenery. I asked you up here because I wanted to talk about something very important. Good, because I have a lot to say. It's about my return to Cassiopeia. What we learned about Sona has been constantly replaying in my mind. Oh, maybe it sounds crazy. That young girl's isolation feels like a reflection of my own life. Don't get me wrong. Compared to Sona, I've had it easy. I've spent my life surrounded by all sorts of people. Constellation, the Navigator Corps. <laughs> Hell, even the UC military. Despite that, no matter how hard I've tried to make them a part of my life, they tend to drift away and disappear. Are you sure? For all we know, it's in my nature to keep people at arm's length. Or worse, push them away. Right now? Are you talking about Constellation? Or what exactly are you saying? Ha! Huh. <sighs> Sorry, I am... Um, I... I just need a moment to gather my thoughts. I know you want to have a serious relationship. You want to become close. So, if you're willing to take that leap of faith with someone like me, then I'm ready to do the same. You're something truly special. You know that? You've 
helped me conquer my self-doubt, my confidence, hell, everything. For the first time in my life, I feel... complete. <laughs> and with you by my side, I'm convinced that feeling will last forever. You're the best thing that's happened to me in my life. I love you. Always. When things... There's something I'd like to discuss. I received a message from my mother a few days ago. She's returned from another one of her sightseeing cruises. Ah, oh, that's right. I haven't really spoken about her to you, have I? My mother lives in a fairly remote location, so we rarely speak. Tends to keep her out of my mind. Sure, when you're younger. But as soon as you get older and they begin controlling your life, that's when you need to strike out on your own. Oh, I'm certain they felt they were doing the right thing. You see, both of my parents were diplomats working under the flag of the UC Administrative Division. After I completed my basic education, they signed me up for a one-year apprenticeship in their department without bothering to ask. Mm, wanted isn't the right word. Demanded would be more appropriate. For my apprenticeship, I was sent to Sidonia. My job consisted of drafting political policies and arbitrating trade disputes. The silver lining of the job was that it allowed me to spend time exploring every square inch of Mars. I was swallowed by it. Months before the apprenticeship ended, I dumped my diplomatic certification and joined the UC Navy. Of course, my parents didn't approve. We had a huge argument that resulted in all ties being severed between us. Well, that wasn't the worst of it. You see, my father was killed during the opening shots of the Colony War. I returned to Jemison for the funeral and reunited with my mother. After that, we vowed to stay in touch. Oh, aren't you sweet? Always concerned with how I'm feeling. That's why I fell in love with you. Your smile, your caring. <laughs> it brightens even my darkest days. Listen, I'm going to be completely upfront with you. All this talk of family, it makes me wonder where our own relationship stands. <laughs> you mean that? You do that? For me? I've been dreaming about this moment and still, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, of course, yes. Ah, I just need a little time to think about the ceremony. I have some thoughts about how we should move forward. You know, I used to dream about finding the love of my life. And here you are. All I ever needed was you, right here beside me. Fun. Landing initiated. What 
watch the flaring. to not make me cry. I will never love another person as much as I love you. Oh, damn. I was starting to enjoy the conversation.
Find out. Greetings, Captain. Research station, you speaking. What is your business here? What? We haven't sent a distress signal? Nothing on the comms. No other ships in the system since our last supply drop. Look, what are you trying to pull here? Really? The high energy research lab? Alright. I don't know what's going on here, but you should talk with the director. For security, I'm going to have to ask your friend to wait out there. What's inside? Stay with me, and don't make any sudden moves. I'll get the door. Welcome to Nishina. Ethan Hughes, Chief of Security. If you'll follow me, I'll show you to the Director. We'll take the back way up. Here, you can see our lovely storage area. Don't touch anything. So, uh... Nishina.
What the? Easy, easy! What the hell was that? One minute, you're following me, and then you're just gone. Minute later, you pop in out of nowhere, looking like you were in the middle of a fight. In our storage room. I should have never let you inside. What is this? Some kind of stealth tick? Who are you working for? <sighs> Look, I don't know what's going on. Let's get you to the director. Maybe she can figure this out. Come on, this way. Finally, someone came. The distress signal. You picked up the distress signal, right? It's been so long. I'm out of food. Out of water. But I made it. I... Wait. How did you get in here? Hughes? Ethan Hughes? But... He's dead. No. No, no, no. This doesn't make any sense. Unless... The accident. Maybe... Maybe this is a side effect of the accident. If the probe is still feeding power to the distortion, then... Right. Sorry. Three months ago, I was calibrating an experiment in our high-energy research lab. There was an accident. An explosion. It caused a gas leak. Sparked a fire. I was trapped in the control room. There was nothing I could do. They're... They're all dead. The lab was built around a xenolith with a dense metallic odd... Back. All right, we're on our way up. Hughes out. I was just filling in the director. Let's keep moving. If anything happens, the director's office is on the second floor, in the field. You can't miss it. Come in. Kaya Patel, research director. And this is our chief scientist, Maria Hughes. Ethan said you disappeared right in front of him. Twice now? Three times? Director. You can't be taking this seriously. Look, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but there has to be a rational explanation for all of this. An artifact? You mean the source of the distortion? No, we don't. Enlighten us. Really? That's all you're gonna say? No, no. Fair enough. 
You have a prior connection with them then. Maybe that's why this is only affecting you. That is quite a claim. What makes you think that? Tell us about this other universe. Raphael? Raphael died in the accident. He... Wait. Gas fire. Gas fire. The leak. Director, there was a hydrogen leak right after the accident. It was contained in a minute or two. But if it hadn't been, it could well have caused an explosion. Another universe, though. That's a lot to swallow. Presumed dead. The research level has been locked down since the accident. We still don't know exactly what happened. If he survived, he could have ended the lockdown, but... This facility and the research level two kilometers beneath us were built to study a gravitational distortion. This artifact and the field it creates. Three months ago, our chief engineer, Raphael, was calibrating an experimental probe when something went wrong. We still don't know what happened. There was a series of explosions and somehow it's still running. That would make sense. That's why the field strength keeps increasing. We have a control unit for the probe. After the accident, I tried to use it to shut down the system, but the kill switch isn't responding. We could shut it off manually, but the entire research level is locked down. We can't even get down there. How? I told you the research level's locked down. We can't even use the damn elevator. What? Clever. In this other universe, Raphael survived. He made it back from the lab. So clearly his elevator works. Take it. And you might be able to shut down the experiment. This is crazy. But first, we have to do something about your shifting. Maria, do any of the other controls still work? Could we adjust the particle sampling rate or the beam voltage? You can't be serious. We have no idea what we're doing. This thing is already tampering with space-time. If this gets any worse... It may also get worse if we do nothing. Right now, this seems to be our only path forward. <sighs> All right. It's worth a try. Then it sounds like we have a plan. Come with me. The control unit is in the fabrication lab next door. Appeared, and the ceiling caved in, and... and... Uh, I thought I'd finally lost it. What? How? Look, if you think things are bad up here, the research level is even worse. I barely made it out, and that was months ago. I don't understand it. together 
Commander! Security breach! Everybody go, out! Go! Run for it! Out move! 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 to clear this out, assuming the rest of the building doesn't come down on top of us. I was in the lab, working on the frequency calibration for the probe. I was walking out of the control room when it happened. I heard the tanks rupture, the alarm sound. I only had a second to react. I jumped back into the control room. The door sealed. I was safe from the gas, the fire, everything. But I was trapped. There was nothing I could do to stop it. If I had gone the other way, maybe I could have made it to the ventilation controls. <sighs> killed the system. Even if it killed me. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. How should I know? You're the one who keeps winking in and out of existence. I just want to get out of here. Go do whatever you're going to do. I'll see if I can clear a path to the door. What? I... Oh, it's you. You realize you just popped into my locked office. So much for security protocols. Uh, sure. Down the hall. Take the stairs next to the atrium. Yeah. Let me get the doors for you. And done. Is there anything else you need? Uh, yes. Kataxi. Nasty things. The original survey team ran across them. You're welcome to read the old logs if you want. Yeah. I'll unlock the terminal for you. The Kataxi in the other universe. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. I've got an experimental thing one of the engineers put together. But... Uh. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. I'm trying to be reasonable here. This isn't getting us anywhere. Sorry, I have to keep it on hand, just in case. You understand?
What? Did you get lost in the hallway? Uh, all right. This is the probe control unit. Most of these controls aren't responding. I'm going to very carefully adjust the settings I can. There's no way to tell what's about to happen. Pay attention and be ready for anything. I'll begin... We're at 93 terabytes. Come. 95. 97. 100. Ugh, nothing. Let's try the other way. 91. 89. What the? Okay, okay. It looks safe to approach. Distortion. Flux pattern matches the distortion in the lab. The setting is just exposing it somehow. Hmm. Step into the distortion, please. <laughs> Nothing. No, hold on. There's a slight pattern change. Some kind of resonance. Stay there. Let me turn the feet back up for a moment. Calibrate into 90, 91. right so the lower setting causes the distortions to manifest and the higher causes you to shift that seems promising keep it on the lower setting until you want to shift and you should be able to avoid any more accidents I'd give you my control unit but it looks like you already have one from the other universe love to take a look at that when this is all over Right. If you can get down to the research level, you need to make your way to the high energy research lab. Disengage the power interlocks, then pull the emergency shutdown to stop the probe. That should finally put an end to all this. Oh, and before you go, the director wanted to speak with you. It really is just down the hall. Well then, all set? If you need supplies, I've asked Dr. Barakova to take care of you. It's the least I can do after everything we've put you through. Before you go, there is one other thing we should discuss. If this experiment is the cause of your shifting, when you shut it down, the shifting will stop. What happens then? To you and to us. There's no way to be certain but let's theorize. Nishina is a closed system, two potential states held in tension. When you shut down the experiment, 
that tension will resolve. You are the outside observer in the system. Whichever reality you are in, at that moment, is what will become real. For you and your universe, at least. The question is, which will you choose? If this were a choice between my life and Raphael's, I would ask you to save him. But as the director of the station, I am responsible for the lives of my staff. 30 people. People with families, careers, futures ahead of them. In this universe. It's not an easy decision, but I am grateful. Thank you. Now, it's time you are going. With the network offline, we can't shut down the security system on the research level, so you can expect some resistance. Be careful. Ethan, unlock the elevator lobby, please. Ma'am, research level is still locked down. I'm aware of that. I... All right. Done. Good luck, dear. It's been a fascinating day. Tatiana Barakova, station's doctor. This is not a public medical facility, but the director has ordered me to assist you nonetheless. I can spare a few med packs. Beyond that, I am not your therapist, your psychologist, or your cosmetologist. If there's anything else you need, ask. Really? <sighs> what happened to you? Here, let me take a look. Hold still. There. I assume you have some urgent medical problem? No? What a surprise. <sighs> Let me see what I can find. I think I still have a few things I could spare. Security lockdown is active. Emergency override controls are available on designated security terminals.
Security lockdown is active. Emergency override controls are available on designated security terminals.
available on designated security terminals.
I wasn't sure if you were alive or... or if you were going to come back. ...for me. I mean, not that I'm not grateful, but why? Why not stay in that other universe? I... yeah. Yeah, I do. It's not much, but I scrounged up a few things you might still be able to use. You're welcome to anything else you find lying around, too. No one's going to miss it. And as for me, I owe you. You ever need an engineer? Just say the word. Now, let's get off this damn rock.